Welcome back, everybody. Hope everyone's having a lovely week. It's a lovely Friday evening. Um, Friday. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great one. But now you are listening to Rye and my my cohort Burn, and yes, we are the bodacious rant. So how are you, Burn? Good, man. I'm real good. Yes. How well. are you? Oh, my mind is pretty blown. Uh, just because you know. <laughs> A lot of crazy stuff in the world, but we're not going to talk about the world tonight. We're just going to talk about the world of WandaVision, as we say. <laughs> the Westview world. Exactly. Yeah, this episode six now of the season, we're nearing the end. There's nine episodes or eight? I forget. Nine. Nine. Yeah, okay. So we're basically in, we got the last, you know, third of the show left. And again, the, every third episode, like, of the season or so, has definitely hit, like, a different, like, point in it if that makes sense you know what i mean yeah i mean they're definitely hitting that like end of the act type thing where it's like episode three we had that that reveal of like okay you know like wanda's had the kids and then now it's like all right then we're what's her name um monica monica yes and monica is like revealed to be like a shield agent and then the last couple episodes have picked up on that sort of storyline and then now it's ending in a certain place where it's like oh okay now i think we're gonna see what the last act has in store for us yeah exactly the act that's that's what i meant to say i couldn't i couldn't think about it in my head but i was just thinking of like three the three arc act but um yeah it was again another fantastic episode uh it didn't again it kind of followed this it's definitely losing the sitcom feel more and more uh this one was in like the 90s uh era so i'm not gonna go much farther than that until we get to our spoiler section so i thought that was kind of funny um mm-hmm. <laughs> just because i was like oh i think i know what this show what this is supposed to remind me about i'll ask you about that in the spoilers uh spoiler part just so we can confirm that but yeah now it's basically all the it's 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 high def again like for everything like it's not i mean i guess the last few episodes have been already mm-hmm. but it's now it's more like current like programming if that makes sense yeah we're getting closer to what you know modern tv is is like definitely yeah. with them you know with this episode being very much a 90s era sitcom and you know the <laughs> the comparisons are there like so much there that's like so familiar to me you know having grown up in the 90s and you as well so it's like i'm like oh this is familiar territory now yeah what year were you born again 94 yeah you don't count no, no i do <laughs> no i feel like anybody who's born past 95 they definitely don't count that doesn't count as like oh i'm a 90s kid it's like not really because you didn't experience the the whole majority of the decade you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think they say like 97 is like you know that after that it's like mm, you're not really a 90s kid. but you know i'm yeah. not an authority on the 90s or anything no nah, who okay. cares it's, it's majority of it's got to be opinion i mean i don't think there's really like an actual thing i just i go by what sounds right I suppose. You know, who who cares? Okay? Who cares? The nineties were nineties <laughs> was a weird era anyways. Like looking back there were a lot of weird trends. A lot of overalls. The sweatshirts <laughs> wrapped around the sweatshirts wrapped around your waist. I mean I don't I mean I still think people do that now, but it just It's coming back. It's weird. Is it? A certain trends here yeah. and there. Yeah, the nineties were just weird. Anyways, actually no, a lot of the colors and actually no, you're right, fashion is kind of coming back to the nineties a little bit, so it's weird, but this episode, again, another hard five out of five rantings for me. What about you, Burn? Nice. I'll, I'll give it a four out of five. It was, it was good. You know, it was real good. It's just not a perfect episode for me. You know, It wasn't as good as the last episode, which last episode is probably my favorite episode of the season. So it's like I'm getting kind of basing it off of that, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's not quite like there, but it's still fantastic. That's interesting. Okay, I'll take that. You know, you're still saying it's good, but no, four out of five. That's just shameful really Anyways. okay it's not a bad rate <laughs> it's a b minus it's not a it's not a hundred percent okay that's that's so <laughs> we could that's just simple math <laughs> okay you can know how to do math that's good <laughs> i hate you anyways uh should we join should we do the spoilers burn yeah, I mean, really, there's not a lot we can say at this point, you know, now that isn't a spoiler. Like, just everything that's happening in the plot at this point is like, you're, you're either in it for the spoilers or you're not. Because it's like, dude, we can't mention anything, really, without spoiling something for someone. So, most definitely, I am ready to get into spoilers. Yeah, because I feel like if we 
talk any more talk any more about it before we really go in depth. It's definitely gonna give stuff away. It's hard. It's a little hard to do that. But anyways, again, now spoiler section. This is the time where you turn it off, ca- catch up with the Wandavision, or you know, listen in, see see if this intrigues you. If our spoilers intrigue you to watch it, shall we, Burn? Absolutely. And we're back for the spoiler section. So, uh, this was a crazy beginning. Definitely. Now, let me ask you this. Th- this was supposed to be a lot like Malcolm in the Middle, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely I wasn't wrong Malcolm in assuming in that. Yeah, just because that was like a huge show in the 90s. Like at least a live action like sitcom show. Um, I guess it could have it been hard to do a home improvement because it just doesn't fit their characters at all. Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying to think, what's another good night show? There were there were a decent amount, but no, I like it's, that they went with like Malcolm. there's like that, and then like Fresh Prince, and like it was a lot. It was like very much like the. I mean, well, I grew up with the, like a lot of the Nick, the Nick at Night shows, you know that, like at the George Lopez show, which I think was a little bit more in the 2000s, but you know they, those shows carried over from that you know decade to decade. So yeah, I think I think Malcolm in the Middle was probably the best one they could have gone for with, like you said, the cast that they had. Yeah, because essentially they were just like Malcolm, the younger brother, and then Pietro is kind of like the oldest brother. I don't remember all the names, but actually there were four sons of Malcolm in the Middle, but we're dealing with, you know, twins and, and a giant man child of an uncle. And mm-hmm. so I, I kind of like the little, like, the, the how Billy, yeah, Billy was uh, the one kind of narrating it, like he was Malcolm, so that was that was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um I'll yeah, say both Pete, the kids, uh, Billy and Tommy, they they both did a really good job of doing that, like little kid breaking the fourth wall, very much like you know uh, Malcolm did in the in his show. So it's like, oh, you know, was, they did a good job. Whoever you know casted these two kids, because I think they're recast, right, from the from the last episode. They they've grown up a little bit more. Well, I mean, they're still the same kids from the last one, like from the final aging, because they had oh, the, there you go. that's right, yeah, 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 because they had. The baby, well, obviously the babies you can't re- you can't redo that. Then they had the five or seven year old, whatever it was, and then the, now they're at the age of like ten or something like. Yeah, they're supposed to be like ten years old because I remember the whole line of like you're not supposed to have a dog until you're ten. Yeah. Um. So there was so yeah, these are the same kids from the last one. No changes yet. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was hilarious just how it's Halloween, which is like one of the. One of the funnest, it's still one of the funnest holidays, especially growing up in the 90s, I feel like, just because, I don't know, I just, it was just a fun time that, back then. There were a lot of, a lot Candy of bars were bigger back then. I will stand by that. <laughs> were they? I don't they know, definitely. I felt like I've always, I felt like I always had the little the snack size ones, but. I mean, I don't know, look at the Snickers now, they're like, so small. Yeah, I don't think about it. Candy's candy, I'll enjoy it, however much <laughs> I get it. Um. But yeah, I, I did like how this one because you know it's Halloween, like we said that uh, Wanda, Vision, and Pietro, aka you know Quicksilver, they're all in their old like '90s costumes from when they first yep. came to in the comics. You know, it's all cheaply made, just like the '90s kind of was a little bit, like when some costumes were. So I thought <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, the and brothers. I like the I like the <laughs> I like the story too behind like the their supposed costumes how like wanda's is supposed to be a uh, a sokovian um uh, fortune, fortune teller, teller. Mm-hmm. yeah and then vision was i guess a lucha libre <laughs> yeah i thought that was interesting how they played that off i'm like oh i could i could definitely see that being like that and then when quicksilver gets his costume with uh tommy they're both in there basically because tommy aka speed in the comics he basically dresses the same as quicksilver except he's supposed mm-hmm. to be green but i like how they were both rocking the classic blue and white uh, yeah. With his crazy hair, <laughs> it was like a very bad cosplay almost, <laughs> and I mm-hmm. thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, his, then, his hair like, reminded me so much of like Ace Ventura. <laughs> for some yeah, he's, I definitely got an Ace Ventura feel with it. Just so just ridiculous. <laughs> um, and then yeah, Billy dressed as his comic book character Wicked with like the kind of like Thor like headband, the red cape. So mm-hmm. they're definitely. I thought that was really cool. Like, oh shit, we're throwing it back even more so to to what they can do and like what they look like mm-hmm. and i i love i love how last one we were starting to get more tension between wanda and vision and yeah. because vision still feels uncomfortable with everything and i i don't blame him just because he he's very suspicious of wanda like he he wants to know what's going on in westview like why 
how do I put it? He just wants to know what's going on more outside of their immediate interactions with the people they know. And he basically kind of played off as like, oh, well, I'm going to go work. And she's like, you're, that's not what you're supposed to do. And he's like, what does that mean? Like immediately cuts her off and I thought, oh shit, like he does, he's not holding back now. Like he's doing it in front of the kids and stuff to kind of uphold the whole, kind of go along with the flow to appease her. But he's definitely like, I, I got to get the bottom of this. You're, you're not telling me anything and you don't want to. So I got to do it for both of us kind of thing. Yeah, it uh, seems like it, like the more it, it goes on, it's like he's not as invested in the family as he was before because it's like he his his mentality is just like none of this is real anyway, you know? Like they, none of it is real to him. It's just all made up and fabricated. So he has that like why should I care mentality. I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and then just the tension between them and how how little Billy is like commenting on it and stuff. It's like, you know, Vision Vision's kind of like, you know, this isn't his priority right now. No, very, very deadbeat father mentality, if you ask me. Almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like if we look at it from like that side of point and things, it's kind of like you just have a family, you know, kids don't make anything. Like like some couples, how they think kids are going to make everything better with them. It's like this is kind mm-hmm. of kind of pointing out. It's like, yeah, it doesn't make anything better. It's kind of making it worse for them. Not to blame the kids, but it's just the situation. Like he's like, this is this is just more stress on top of what we were doing kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was cool. You know, and then, you know, Pietro, again, just basically like a giant brother to them. I like Vision's little quip at him. He's like, oh, I didn't realize he was so good with kids. Like, interesting. Mm-hmm. Because even in Ultron, like, you know, Wanda and Pietro are kind of like 20s, maybe? Yeah, like mid-20s. They're supposed to be like on the younger side, like fresh, like into adulthood kind of. So they're yeah. still, he basically died as a kid, like as a guy who never really got to have a childhood. So this, I guess this is kind of his way of doing it. Um, and then I also, like... Hold on, let me see. I'm checking my notes because I actually I wanted to kind of check it. Wanted to really keep mental track of everything, but um, oh my god, what is that? Just the costume part, and then Monica. I like how it cuts back to outside of the dome again, and yeah, mm-hmm. Wanda's that whole red thing when she went in, went out. It's almost as if it's getting worse. Like it hasn't. It doesn't seem like it's expanding, but they just keep getting intel. Like I thought that drone was like changing into like a rocket kind of thing when they brought it into the tent you know yeah i I wonder what was going on with that thing i think it's just like how how the drone originally like in the last one how it was able to kind of maintain its shape because of the materials and stuff i think (laughs) it's i think because of how it looked this time it was like oh shit like she's she's kind of breaking those boundaries like there is nothing everything's gonna change now it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. um but yeah hayward he's just increasingly just become more of a of a villain, man. Like he just yeah, he, he's on one, dude. Like he's on a Mino like villain power trip right now, and like all the stuff that he says to to Monica and and, and the other two, uh, Darcy and um, and Jimmy. Um, Jimmy. Jimmy. I was just gonna call him Randall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, J- Jimmy. Like those three, you know, who are like you know, quote unquote, the heroes on the outside. Like he's just he's just kind of turning on them, you know, and they're fed, you know, they're they're ticked off, you know, rightfully so because in the last episode he was about to you know, kill Wanda or attempted to kill Wanda with the drone. And they're like, dude, like, what are you doing? You're, you're making things worse. And he's just kind of like taking that as an opportunity to, to just kind of tear down Monica for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, just, it could be, well, he did get promoted a few years ago, so it's not like he's fresh into this necessarily, but I also like their exchange too. Just when he's kind of like, you know, it's much easier from when you were gone. Like, you haven't had to deal with the last five years. And I totally understood that. Like, yeah. it kind of, it kind, it makes me understand him more. Like, because as yeah. we saw in Endgame with Cap's, like, folk, like not focus group, um, like, therapy group, Support group. Yeah. Support group, thank you. How they're all just kind of trying to re-piece life together. And now that everybody's back, it's like, it's, it's again, like another monkey wrench. Like, we had to deal with you guys gone. Now we have to deal with everybody being back. Like, it's good and it's bad just because a lot has changed in those five years. So I understood that line. But this is one thing I forgot to comment on last time in the last episode. But, yeah, Monica definitely has beef with Carol. It's it, I definitely get the vibe that she's not she, – not only does she not want to talk about her, just because it's like we when she saw her as a kid – she saw Carol when she was a kid again, and she hasn't seen her for 20, 30 years. Like yeah. That kind of she still has some resentment towards that just because she didn't want to talk about her last one. And when he's like, I know your relationship with Danvers, she had that face of like, that was a like, low blow. Like, you don't have to bring yeah. that up. 
So, yeah, definitely. I do think there there is there's some resentment there. Like you said, because the last time she saw her was probably 30 years ago. And in that time, her mom died and, you know, she was nowhere to be found. So, I mean, I I imagine someone like that would be would be like would hold some sort of a grudge to supposedly your mom's best friend. And you weren't there for her when she needed her to, you know. Yeah, real quick before we go on, I actually did start seeing rumors after the last episode or two episodes ago. What happened? Like what we found out with Monica and her mom was how Captain Marvel in Endgame she got her short haircut to kind of be almost like the, like how instead of shaving your head for someone who died of cancer or like going through cancer, she cut her hair to kind of commemorate that. You know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, that's that's a rumor, and I'm like that would make sense, but at the same time, like I, that could be a stretch. You know what I mean? But that'd be yeah. cool if that's what happened. Just because, again, five years, like, she did come back right as everybody disappeared. So her mom was just got out of the first surgery for cancer. So mm-hmm. who knows? We'll have to we'll have to see till Captain Marvel 2 or anything like that. But um, let's move on. <laughs> so, yeah, that was just messed up. And then he dismisses them. But I will say this. Jimmy is a low-key badass. Just how yeah, him and Monica take out those sword agents. I was like, oh, shit. Like, he's not just comic relief. He can back his stuff up, too. Like, I respect that. So then <laughs> Darcy's badass. just, you guys don't want to tell me the plan? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, Darcy, you, you're not in it. You're out of your element. It's okay. Take take, mm-hmm. take, a, take a break. Um, I, I thought that was just a really cool moment. And I know everybody's talking about how they want a Jimmy and Monica show or Jimmy and Darcy X-Files. And after that, I would be like, I would totally want to see that. Just them investigating other like superhero anomalies and stuff. Just because they could do the action, they could do the comedy, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'd definitely be a show. Like if they announced it, I'd be like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> I, I do enjoy their their whole like side story that's going on here. And they, they have really good chemistry together, you know, as, as a team. So it's like... If they want to do more, I'm here for it. I am definitely here for it. I know one of the writers is really kind of trying to write up something for it to be like, let, let's get this going. If I can get this right, we, we'll get something here. Um, and then Quicksilver. So I kind of like how uh, – I'm trying to think. The last episode, there was a cut character to kind of act as like the the audience. Who who would we say is the best one? I guess Dar- how Darcy and, and Jimmy are kind of like commentary for us – Quicksilver is kind of the commentary for like the writers, if anything, how he's just calling out everything. And he's like, well, you know, like basically I'm, I look different, but I'm still the bro. I'm still your brother. It's like, so, you know, you're different. And even she's questioning, like, how are you like, how are you? Why do you look the way you do? Like even she doesn't understand what's going on. So I thought that was mm-hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah, and, he's very uh, self-aware, which is which is interesting. Yeah, and even that line of, like, if I found Shangri-La, I wouldn't want to be reminded of the past either. I thought, okay, who the fuck is doing this? I don't think it was her. It definitely isn't her that conjured him up. Somebody else is pulling the strings. And and even though he said, like, oh, well, you, oh, wait, no, wait, that's for later. I don't, I don't want to skip that yet. But uh, when they were doing the whole trick-or-treating thing with the kids, I thought it was really cool how I saw – I was kind of picking out some costumes, like – is this just all like re- are they pointing out other stuff one of them was dressed as a knight which i think is kind of like an easter egg for black knight coming for the in black the knight oh. yeah but as a kit harrington's character character i thought that was kind of like oh I, it's probably just a goof at the same time like no that's gotta if marvel's doing their thing that's that's gotta be it like that's eternals i saw a guy a kid dressed up as like sub-zero kind of um there was a lot of cool like pop culture references in this, so I thought that was like given it's Halloween, that's, so of course, but that's pretty cool. I, I didn't notice any of that, so that that's definitely like another reason to rewatch this episode. <laughs> I was just trying to look for tips and like I'm trying to see, okay, what other Marvel characters are they really gonna throw at this kind of thing? Just to mm-hmm. just out of just out of fun. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. And when another another like little Easter egg was when the kids are like, oh my god, there's more candy up this way. It's like, oh, kick ass, let's go. Mm-hmm. She's like kick ass. It's like yeah, because he's basically in another comic book universe too yeah. as kick ass's buddy. Him and him and Aaron Taylor Johnson who both yeah, like, they're, both, they're both kick ass and they're both exactly. in exactly. I thought that was kind of like a fun little joke at both of them. Like yeah, we're both kick ass and we're both quicksilver now. Like that's kind of funny. Um, and then let me see what else and then when she's talking with her kind of like oh like I didn't I thought Vision was supposed to be doing it with you and he's like. Well, do you want me to change something, Wanda? It's like, what is Herb's deal too? So Herb and Agnes are the only other two people that are really like self-acknowledging outside of their character roles compared to everybody else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. Whereas, um, whereas, uh, how was the lady's name in in the in the second episode where where she breaks? She like it, it's not like she's completely. Dottie. 
Dottie. There you go, Dottie. Yeah, Dottie was like became aware for a second and then fell right back into it. But as we saw, like you said, with Agnes last episode and now Herb in this episode, it seems like either either everyone is knows more than they're letting on, or maybe like as as this thing progresses, like Wanda's losing a hold over them. And I think. Maybe, you know, some things that happen later on in this episode, you know, signify that the latter is, is true. Yeah, exactly. I just thought it was just weird. And but I like how they're like playing pranks on everybody. Like they're using their super speed to kind of like pull a silly string, take all the candy, smash jack o lanterns. Mm-hmm. It's like, good God, how old are you, man? You're just terrible, terrible people. It's a broad Again, daylight a man, still. A man child. <laughs> oh, man. But. And then how we cut to Vision. Vision was just he had he basically had like the Stranger Things side of it all. Where oh yeah, just how he's walking. Because I know they were kind of pointing out how, it like how Hayward is tracking Vision just because he's the only like real signature they can find with his vibranium body, and it's like all the neighbors are in the immediate vicinity around Wanda are acting totally normal. Like the kids are out running around, the parents are happy. You know, Norm and everybody are doing what they do. But when Vision's are completely away from Wanda outside of the town, kind of like how in the last episode he's like, "What are the kids? Where are all the kids? Where, where's all these families that are here? This is a yeah. this is a decently sized town. We can't be the only ones here." And we see that one family at the house that he kind of stops and stares at, just in the loop, just trying to hang up something. The yeah, guy's with just like putting one tear coming down her eye. Oh my gosh! I was pretty heartbroken watching that. Like not too like, oh my god, I'm crying. But it was decently like. That kind of sucks where you're trapped in your own body and you can't do it where they could be starving. We don't know if they're starving to death. We don't know what's going on, but they're probably all like Norm where they have something going on and they can't get to it because she's in the way. She's not letting anyone go. So yeah, I thought there's, that was like just... that, there's that mental block that, like you said, is the farther away it gets, it's like the less of a person you really are. Like this lady's caught in the loop. But then as you go further, people are just – you know mannequins essentially yeah that was that was again that was pretty scary and how he's just kind of just he's trying to piece it together but he's just getting more sickened by the thing he walks yet he still keeps going you know curiosity kill the cat if you know what i mean (laughs) and then what else happened the only thing i didn't get though if maybe you could fill me in as the whole yogurt infomercial a very 90s themed one where it has like the claymation or like the cartoon yeah but I didn't get the Yo Magic thing. I guess the only thought was the whole Yo Magic only for survivors. I was, I'm like, is I think that's supposed to reference Wanda, but I just didn't get the whole brand. This is the first infomercial in the season that has no real like noticeable name to it, unless maybe maybe you know something, Bruno. No, I mean I'm as much out of the loop as you are. I think this one was the most, I guess, up for interpretation, uh, info like you know commercial that we've seen and so far this season where it's like. You know, it doesn't give you exactly what what it's like trying to explain where you're like, OK, what do you mean? Like a snack for the survivors So the survivors of what? You know, is it the survivors of of the blip or is it, you know, so the survivors of whatever's going on here inside Westview? It's very much you know, cryptic. And I think that's very much intentional. I just had an epiphany. How we just saw the neighbor stuck in a loop. That's exactly what the kid was in the infomercial. He tried to open up the yogurt and Maybe. he died. I think that's what's happening. There's all these people that are not in basically inside her immediate thoughts and stuff like that. They're all dying. I think that's yeah, what's happening. That, could, like, that very much could be the case. Like that, that could be alluding to like, if this keeps going on, they will die because they're just stuck. They're not moving. And even when hate, when they were on Hayward's computer, like Darcy hacked in and she said, Oh, like, well, he does have an accurate head count, but and you just see the blips. They're all just kind of staying in their, their respective homes. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, then are they mo- – but no, and there was no indication of moving or not. It was just a little readout. So we don't know exactly. But from what Vision's like perspective was that these people are literally are, like you said, just mannequins mm-hmm. just standing and possibly dying because they're not eating. They're not moving. They're just sitting yeah. there. Um, so I don't know. We'll have to – I think that's kind of what it meant, but you, you have very valid points too. Like, is it like, you know, surviving the decimation? Is it, you know, just, or dealing with all the loss, kind of like how Wanda is like a survivor essentially. So I'll have to see that. But I thought it was, I didn't really know how far they were going to go into the whole, the kids being like comic book accurate, but we got to see that tonight too, where mm-hmm. uh, 
Tommy is a uh, basic. He is speed. He's he's got the super speed, just like Quicksilver. And oh, and also the movie marquee I thought was funny how it had the Parent Trap and it had uh, the Incredibles. I was like, they're from oh, two different time periods, wow. but that's funny. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Jesus, there's so many little like Easter eggs hidden in the background in this episode. I bet there, I bet there's a lot more that people haven't discovered yet. Maybe. I mean, I think that's also the Incredibles being on there because the Parent Trap. There was the old one from like the 50s or 60s, or an old ass movie. Yeah. And then there was yeah, a yeah. Lindsay Lohan one, which I had on VHS growing up. Probably because, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. <laughs> and that one definitely came out in the 90s, but Incredibles didn't come out until 2004. So I think that's hinting at like that's the next decade they're going to go for. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it has to be, yeah, the early 2000s. But again, just their, their whole interactions with each other, like how she she's just like, where's your accent? Where's yours? Like, you know, Wanda, I was, a, I was, got shot in the street and then i heard your voice and i came so it's like that's soup if you really break break it down that's so eerie to think about like you were dead like you basically heard her voice in death and you were just kind of summoned out of nowhere like yeah. oh, like i think i just kind of imagined of it being like just eerie like where it's just like black and then you hear your sister's voice and it's like woke back up like hey wanda like what's up like i'm here again I yeah like I, just like like nothing happened like exactly you just like you were dead one second and all of a sudden you're just alive again it's like that's just not that's not something that just happens it's like you know where why do you look different why are you acting this way where's your accent like there's so much weird going on with you and you seem to be just okay with everything going on it's like well, it, that's what leads me to think it's like what, what is really going on with with Quicksilver, you know? Yeah, and then, you know, how she tells the kids not to go past Ellis Avenue since you're kind of running around all over the place getting candy. Um, how then it cuts to Vision where he gets to that cul-de-sac and everybody's just still. And we see Agnes basically at the tip of Ellis Avenue stuck. Like, it's so weird, but she wasn't at the same time. She was the only person outside that vicinity that could still move and talk, essentially. And mm-hmm. it's like, She's like, where's the town square, like, town square scare? Like, where is it? It's like, it's in town square. Oh, I got lost. I got lost, like, in the town you grew up in. And that that was a big indicator. I'm like, did she really grow up? I don't think she, yeah, I don't think she's from there still. I think she just happened to live there when Wanda came in. That's how it happened. But when he, when she woke, when he woke her up with that little truth touch or, you know, the wake up call, Mm -hmm. that was just such a weird interaction, just like how, like your vision, like oh my god, you're an Avenger, and just what's an Avenger? Like, mm-hmm. holy shit, he really doesn't remember anything. Bef- I mean, I guess I kind of would, forgot about that a little bit. The la- line from the last episode where he's just like, I don't remember anything before Westview. Like, what are we? Yet yeah. he knows he has powers and he knows he's an android and stuff. It's like that's so weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's like he just knows just enough to be able to function within Wanda's reality. Yeah, and just. How uh, she just got really creepy really quick. Just how mm-hmm. am I dead? No, like why the 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 scene from the trailer I was like oh finally we're caught up with the trailer essentially yeah <laughs> um, just because uh, you are like you're dead like dad like okay lady we get it he's dead relax <laughs> <laughs> all right we heard you the first time <laughs> pretty much but her cre- her laugh got creepy like mm-hmm. Catherine Hahn knows how to not only be funny and kind of serious but it's like never really been scared of her before. Step Brothers, kind of, but this one was like a, a legit <laughs> scary. <laughs> yeah, it was a different type of scary in, in Step Brothers. <laughs> what are you doing? This is a men's bathroom. <laughs> Stay golden, porn boy. I got it. My God. My God. You're incredible. <laughs> oh, she's a she's a gem of an actor. Just I can't get enough <laughs> Catherine Hahn. I wish she was in like this a little bit more, like playing like the all like the scary and stuff. But anyways. Um that was so weird how then he woke her back up. She kind of went back into town. And Ellis Avenue, we kind of got to see what happens. But before we move into basically the end of it, um, I like how, you know, you know, Jimmy and Monica, they kind of have their plans. Like, okay, well, I got to meet my guy at the top of the hill because he's got my bunker. So let's head on over there. And Darcy just said, you can't go back in. I, I don't think it's a good idea. And she's like, oh, I'll be fine. Like, what's the worst she can do? She already threw me out of the dome before. Mm-hmm. It's like, She'll just you're... change my clothes into something. <laughs> but she's kind of confirming her suspicions. And she flips the laptop around. It's like, your molecules are changing. At, like, this is a big deal. Your blood is changing. Like, yeah. you don't know what the else, what more of that will do to you. 
and she's kind of like i don't care i want to help wanda and that's what i love about monica she's she's coming at it from like a very humane point of view like she has missed everything in the last five years she wasn't there at the the battle for Thanos, like against thanos and stuff but she she's like we we can't we can't go at this like maybe how hayward's going like how he's been doing it's like we got to be a little bit smarter think about it more because if she's the problem she's got to be the solution yeah very much so and you know i like how she's just like i i can't stand by we got to go help her like regardless of what the cost like the risk is it's like all right suit yourself kind of deal i i I just thought that was a really like badass and heartfelt scene Mm -hmm. um and then how we see and then before kind of like the vision kind of tries to go through the dome that last interaction with quicksilver and wanda where it's just like he's just he's just been calling out on shit the whole time and enabling her board like borderline just like dude the way you've helped deal with this stuff is really great like the kids and everybody i mean morally it's fine it's like you're okay with this? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. why not? It's like, no, this is not okay. He's she's holding it down in hostage. Like, yeah, and that's what makes me very suspicious of him because, like, yeah. like I said, you know, like he's he's very different than the Quicksilver that we were introduced to in Age of Ultron. Not in just appearance alone. Like, like I like I said, it's like all of a sudden, like you're you're back and all you're just like okay with everything that's going on. It's like, dude, there's there's something else going on here. Yeah, and then even their characters have changed a little bit too. Because again, even though they were villains in Age of Ultron, and in all honesty, she's gotten full villain in this this show. She basically is a bad guy at this point. Um, it's like even then, back back in Ultron, when he was threatening to destroy the world, they thought we're not we're all, our fights with the Avengers, not the world. Like we don't want to kill il- millions of people. And even Pietro's mm-hmm. like, like what if we what if they don't want to change, and. So they, they were a little more humane back then where this time around they're she's just again, she's basically kind of wanting that confirmation like what I'm doing is fine. I can keep going if it's like if if I'm trying to do the right thing essentially, it's like Wanda, you're not doing the right thing though. You're you're slowly killing these people, essentially, driving them insane. And when Vision was going through the dome, basically confirmed that suspicion too of like what happens when he goes outside of it. And mm-hmm how the dome is just not like it's pulling him apart literally like you bet if you leave you die yeah and, it won't let him go yeah it was such a messed up thing like it's not just like decaying like it's just pulling pieces out of him like yeah very gruesome but it's also him just saying i don't care like it's better than being stuck in there where i can't help these people like i can't help them live their lives and he's trying to get help like when he's looking at darcy and them just saying please help these people not help me help them like that was vision is just Again, gem of a character, just fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Well, so, yeah, I mean, he's he's like the best of the best of everybody, you know. Like how they alluded to in Age of Ultron, he's just basically like this world Superman, essentially. Yeah, and then um, how Billy he showed his powers too. His Wiccan came into being where he, yep. and it was also kind of like a play on Incredibles too. How Tommy's zipping around and he stops him, kind of like how Violet stopped uh, Dash in the at the dinner table in the mm-hmm. movie. Hey, no force field. <laughs> <laughs> and she and he's basically in tune with his dad. Like, mom, there's something going on. Like, we we gotta help him. She's like, where is he? He's like, I don't know. Like, there's soldiers there. I I don't know. And she goes full on Scarlet Witch with it. Just red eyes, pauses everything, and expands mm-hmm. the dome to basically save her husband. But even then, she pushed it way past that. And yeah, Darcy handcuffed to the car. Everybody kind of running away from it. <laughs> I love yeah, all her. Of the she's sword like, agents and stuff. She's just like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, God damn yeah. it! Like, yeah. I'm oh, caught. Fudge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how it turned the sword agents into clowns. They they were the carnival. Like, uh, I think like that's a play on something. Like freaks. Like I don't know. Maybe. Well, I'm, I'm probably. I, 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 I think that's just like how how she views you know these sword agents. They're just they're essentially just a circus. You know they're all clowns. They, like she doesn't yeah. view them as like a real threat to her. Yeah, that that's probably right. But how Monica and Jimmy, I'm pretty sure they got away, got out of mm-hmm. there because they did speed out of there. And then mm-hmm. Hayward barely by the the hair of his neck, man, he gets out of there with a couple of agents. But everybody everybody turned into Westview. Like Westview's definitely like it has a 1950s sign. 
And I like how one of the, the sword trucks is a funnel cake truck. I thought that was pretty mm-hmm. funny. And then how the helicopter turns into a, a, like a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon, yeah. Like that, yeah, that's really, I thought that was really interesting to, to change all that. But, mm-hmm. oh man. And then we, and then that was a fucked up line too before she did that where Quicksilver's like, hey, your husband can't die twice. It's like, whoa, dude, that yeah. was fucked up. Like, if it was her real brother, he would have been like, where is he? I'll go get him. And she would have mm-hmm. been like, no, it's fine. Stay here. But, and she just blasted him into the hay. Like, damn, this is, this is definitely causing tension. And even he said early in the episode, I'm just here to cause trouble between you. Like, that's what you wanted, right? And she's mm-hmm. kind of like, no, like, that's not what I wanted. Like, <laughs> so that was a crazy episode. Crazy way to end it. And le- like, we have to wait another week. God damn it. Another week. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't want to just- do it. <laughs> It's just too too long of a wait. It's like, wow, man, I just need to know where this goes now. But like I said, I, I agree with a lot of the community that she is a supervillain at this point. This is definitely a great way to transit, to segue into Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange. Just because we know from rumors that she's supposed to be one of the main villains in that one. So this is kind of giving the insight of what her mindset will be like for that one. Oh, maybe man. yeah maybe so i still think there there is like you know in another like i said an unseen force that's really pushing certain things along the way like you yeah. know i still i still do think agnes is you know one of the villains and i do think you know whoever i don't think that's that's pietro i think that's someone else who's like you know coming in and trying to trying to do something with whatever like wanda's world is and i do have like a theory about what that could be i mean we got we got a couple more minutes. What, what's what's your theory? If you want to share it with me, and, <laughs> share it with the class. Well, because I, I I remember you like well, I mean before we we started recording, you were saying like you didn't think Agnes is that you're that you're you're, you're there's some doubt there that that she is has like is like a villainous role here. But I think that very much so that she's still very much a villain because like. I think the okay. What do you do? <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. I said that. I don't know why you're putting words in my mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, keep going. Yeah, like basically, real quick, what I was saying before we recorded is that with that interaction she had with Vision, I don't. I'm definitely on the fence of what she is. I'm still confer- I'm still kind of on the side that she's a supervillain, kind of pulling strings, really tugging at Wanda and her heartstrings, just kind of maybe causing a psychic break. But at the same time, maybe she is just a random person that just happened to be in it, especially when she said Wanda won't let us leave. She won't even let us think about it. Like, I mean, it could be also be her manipulating like vision, just trying to like drive the divide between them, essentially, and especially since think, he's getting to the truth. So, yeah, and that's what I think it is. I think she's in her in her way, manipulating vision into basically causing the expansion of this of this Westview bubble where, she, yeah, you know, like she's kind of been doing things that he would notice, you know, or like in the, in the third episode, she's the one that put him on to Monica, not being, you know, part of the community. And then the episode after that, her, you know, breaking character, killing the dog and killing the dog. It's like, okay. And then now in this episode where she's, where, you know, she's out there where really she shouldn't be. Cause like you said, you know, if you've grown up here, you wouldn't be all the way out here. Like you would know where, the the center of the community is and her stand you know t- basically telling vision you know you you're an avenger you have to help us and him pushing the boundary and i think that was that's essentially whatever this evil force is wanting to do to consume basically the world that you know at some point you know pushing this whole you know westview bubble into making it this this all consuming thing and i think that's the sort of manipulation that's going on here with agnes in particular just thought about this i'm calling it now uh, Herb could be Mephisto slash the devil himself. I know people are saying, you know, Evan it Peters. Just, over. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to say just, that. And I'm like, there's like a, you know, like a devil thing. And it's like, dude, you're really like nagging her on with like a lot of the things you're saying. But again, Norm would be, or Herb would be perfect just because he's the unsuspecting guy. He, mm-hmm. He's just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to tell now again, because we still like, this is what I love about this show. It keeps giving us answers to certain things and hinting at what it could be, mm-hmm. but it's still leaving a lot for us to consume. Like it just, it definitely gives, makes me want to keep watching it. And goddamn these writers, because they're doing such a great job at it. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's just, just an onion of a show where you know the more layers you peel back, you're just like, damn it, there's still more. <laughs> there's still more to uncover here. 
Uh, I thought you were going to hint that when you keep peeling them, they grow, when they leave them out in the sun, they grow little white hairs. <laughs> oh, well, maybe. <laughs> like in the Shrek race, like ogres are like onions. <laughs> they stink? Yes. No. They make you cry. No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they start sprouting little white hairs. <laughs> no, <laughs> ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it? You get it. All right. <laughs> And then his line of just, uh, well, cakes, cakes got layers. I don't care what everyone likes. Ogres are not like cakes. <laughs> I love Shrek, oh but God. I'm just getting the whole, whole other loop. But so yeah. I got a, I got a question for you. Do you think the whole allusion to basically Monica's genetic structure changing? Do you think in any way that could be a hint at mutants oh, in absolutely. the MCU? That's there's no doubt about that. I'm sorry. Was that the was that all of your question? I didn't mean to interrupt. But that's a hard yes. Yeah, no, that, that's just basically it. Hard yes, absolutely. Just because her molecule is changing. I mean, hopefully it doesn't kill her off because that would really suck. Like this lady, I forget the actress's name. I got to commit it to memory. But she's done such a great job as Monica. Not only is it brilliant casting because she looks a lot like the girl that they casted for the little kid version of her in Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. but. She's just such a great actress for only someone we're seeing in this show for maybe having like two or three episodes of actually her own story. It's it's, it's awesome. And, and you know, she's also helped flesh out like Jimmy and Darcy to have more important roles than just being comic relief. Like we're seeing other sides of, you know, humans who could really contribute to the Avengers and the greater superhero world. So, um, but I definitely, I am... 100% sure she's changing everybody's DNA. I wouldn't be surprised if Westview, New Jersey is going to be the site for, you know, the first X-Men, like the like the ground zero for mutants, like the new phenomenon kind of thing. Especially mm-hmm. cuz the Hex X like X-Men, you know? Yep. And like <laughs> and again, the the X is the Hex has gone more red. It isn't invisible anymore. It is a apparent uh, giant shape in the middle of nowhere and it's it's gonna cause a lot of problems. I think this is, I think Wandavision will probably end just be this series, like just this season. It may work best that way, in my opinion. Yeah, just because this I, is I don't the really first Marvel show. A second. No, and this is the first Marvel show post Endgame. So this is basically setting the tone of like this is what the rest of Marvel is gonna be like. A great way to introduce villains, like even Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're gonna see that. Um, that one agent, U.S. agent, whatever his name is, basically the new Captain America. Mm-hmm. We're going to see Baron Zemo make his comeback. Those masked people, like from the Super Bowl trailer, which was awesome. Because that Super Bowl sucked. We totally called it wrong. God damn it, Brady. What do you mean we did? I said Tom Brady was going to win. <laughs> but that's I not called it wrong. God damn it. Well, you're a bastard. <laughs> you suck. Why would you even say that to me? Anyways, um, but... Yeah, like I said, I, I definitely think it's going to lead to X Men for sure. I mean, what do you think? Do you maybe it's just a random thing, or do you kind of have? Do you agree? Yeah, no, no. Like like you said, I do think it's going to be sort of a ground zero type thing where I don't think this will be the like the first mutants. You know, I do think that you know mutants like you know, Xavier, Magneto, and even Wolverine. You know, these people that have been around for a long time. I think they'll still be there, but I think at this point in the MCU that the mutants have been very scarce. Like it's not, not been like enough people to really, you know, cause people's attention to, to go to them. But I think after the events here, like you said, maybe there's just like a, like a huge spike in cases of mutant people being around in the MCU. So I think this will be the catalyst for the MCU, you know, go, you know, the bringing in the X-Men, but I think they'll they'll do it in a way where this wasn't the creation of them. This was just sort of the the spark that you know created much much more than there was you know beforehand. Yeah, like I said, it could still have an how we could have a House of M moment where mm-hmm. she just yeah like like reverse House of M. Yeah, where instead of like she could expand the hex worldwide kind of thing, and instead of it changing everything, it's just going to change people, just mm-hmm. to really screw up the world like. You guys fucked with my world. I'm going to fuck with yours right back. So I think that's what it could be alluding to. And that'd be awesome. I would totally love to see that. Um, and especially because she's kind of laid down the groundwork for it. She's like, I'm tired of hiding. You know, we shouldn't mm-hmm. be tired. We shouldn't be afraid to hide of who we are. And that was a whole premise of like the X-Men comics. And even in the movies too. Like they're tired. They don't want to be running in fear. They want to basically either dominate the world or live peacefully. Like it's one or the other kind of thing. So them that's do i have any other questions nah that's pretty much i I got nothing else to think about for this one what about you burn 
that was basically it. Just the whole, you know, what does this mean for for the X Men, and then just like you know, what's going to happen next, essentially, because it's like now that she's expanded the the you know this Westview bubble, how much further can it go? And is that like the end game? Like, is that what this you know unseen force is influencing it, or is it you know is it all just her? Like I said, I don't think it is because you know even when you know uh, what's his name uh, Evan Peters is asking her, you know, how did you do it? You know, how do you do all this? So she doesn't really have an answer for that. She just says, you know, I just remember being alone. I just remember being like really sad, and so I think something had, must have taken advantage of that. And this is a glimpse of to what the their end game is is expanding this Westview bubble for whatever reason. Yeah, that was that was a very very sad moment where she's just kind of slowly admitting like I'm upset and I still like feel sad and now my I'm kind of losing my husband to it. So the fact that he was also like you can confide in me, I'm your brother. It's like are you though? Like I think you're just trying to get her to spill something to just kind of like reel her in more or like ex- I don't know you, you you know what I mean just kind of get more out of her essentially so mm-hmm. but we'll have to see burn you know this was again fantastic episode but two more questions one question how come it kept you from like four to five like what more what else do you think would have made you like really like like it more so um I mean I don't know anything really like I said it's just it's just kind of like the the jumping off point for act three so I mean I'm sure would you know the next few episodes to come are just gonna take the ground money it was very much a groundwork type episode like you know episode three was and i don't know like i said it's just just for me it wasn't like as amazing as last episode because the last episode i mean everything was popping off and it was just yeah. like things you know a lot of these plot threads were were paying off this is very much a we're setting things up again to to you know have the, the essentially the third act go so it's like okay you know that's just that's just the the nature of storytelling really so it's like you know the payoffs are a lot more fun than than the setups yeah no totally fair i was just curious like if there was anything you felt like it was lacking or something maybe something i missed but no i get you man for me like i said five out of five just because i I love the more the deeper we go into it and then just the act like the build-up is it's definitely another build-up episode for this last like few episodes but i was i was all in you know so Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know, maybe, maybe just like me throwing out fives out of fives at everything. It seems a little, oh, may, may detract from the real perfect episodes. I'm going to, I'm going to be all, I'm, I'm proud of it. I don't care. <laughs> five out of five for everything. <laughs> you get a five. You get a five. You get a five. You get a five. And then last question. What's with the hat? I mean, you know, this is a Halloween spooktacular, so, you know, I just got my just got my hat thing, but you really had to be there for it. You know? Yeah, there we go. I was waiting for that answer, just the the Always Sunny episode where they move into the suburbs. Yeah. Like, they're talking about Russian hats? Why, what's the deal with a Russian hat? Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Just don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, you, just, you, you had to be there. You had to be there. <laughs> like, I'll have to get one really so I could join you. <laughs> Oh man! But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, you know if you stuck around for this one, this is getting really good. Like I said, Burn has a fair point. Not everything is five out of five. For me, I've been enjoying these last few episodes, so that's just me. But please check it out because, uh, like, like he said also before, if you haven't seen this show and you've seen all the Marvel stuff, you're doing yourself a huge disservice because this is basically this is giving you the groundwork for the next movies to come. Even though you know we were supposed to have Black Widow, Shang Chi, and the Eternals last year, and that was kind of supposed to be it. This is this is definitely our first piece of Marvel, and I think it's gonna it's it's great. So, yeah, we'll... I think that might even have worked to you know the overall MCU's favor because this is laying some interesting groundwork for whatever Phase Four is gonna be. So, I think the like I said like I said before, if you're not jumping into this show and you're a fan of the MCU, you're probably gonna be missing out on a lot. Yeah, and and I feel like again they can only keep going up with Marvel. So. Uh, definitely catch up on it uh give us a like comment you know if there's anything we miss or maybe anything you guys notice for who's seen yeah. it just because your theories <gasps> exactly i would love to know him even actually also one other kid dressed up as a t-rex i think that was hinting at devil dinosaur um <laughs> so that's just something random but it's a it's a stretch but i thought it was kind of cool anyways um burn well i'll talk to you soon everybody uh keep uh, being bodacious and uh, keep on ranting Exactly. We'll catch you guys on the next one with, I'm sure, some more interesting stuff to talk about. Absolutely. But peace out, Burn. Adios, man.